Hello, everybody, and welcome to our virtual happy hour, our Halloween Hootenanny. <laughs> How is everybody doing? I'm sorry I'm not, like, more dressed up uh, for, for Halloween. I tried to do uh, a Beetlejuice situation, as you can see with the stripes. However, um, the green hair situation didn't end up working out. So th th there was, like, a chalk, and I couldn't fix it. So otherwise, um, I would have done a more of a situation. But we are having another virtual happy hour at the end of the month. And I'm going to go all out with my costume then, don't you worry. Hey, Doc, how's it going? <laughs> Welcome to our virtual happy hour, everybody. Um, today, we're going to be talking about a few things. Our Halloween event, uh, A Nightmare on Bridge Street. Uh, it's the Colonial's Halloween event. And uh, I have a very special guest, Dash Daring, uh, to talk about it with you. Uh, we're going to be talking about um, also our rental, our private screenings of um, the Berry Theatre um, and a few other fun little surprises as well. We're going to be doing some trivia um, based on the films that we are showing uh, that you will probably know. And of course, as well as conversation trivia, we are going to have some cocktails as well. And I'm going to teach you how to make Sarah's love potion. And uh, Dash is going to make you uh, a nice, interesting one uh, that he's going to talk through as well. So without further ado, I'm going to welcome my guest. Please welcome, you know him as Dash Daring, aka Chuck, aka Colonial Theatre Extraordinaire. Let's welcome him to the live stream. Hello, are you there? Ah, <laughs> it's a full moon. I'm sorry. I didn't, <laughs> let me just take off my mask. All right, let's get this. Ah. Oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Does that it's count a as a protective a uh, piece? It's a full moon last night, so I apologize if no one's ever seen Dash Daring's actual eyes. That's, uh, I'm sorry about that. Let me just, there we go. There we go. Perfect. Mm -hmm. Hi. What, what kind of uh, prescription glasses are those? These are Mr. Lobo's official Blood O Vision glasses. These mm -hmm. are great for when life is just too normal and plain and you just feel like goring it up a whole bunch. And you know what? Yep. The, life is really nice and plain at the moment, isn't it? So uh, <laughs> <laughs> we definitely need more of that. Yeah, let's sass everything up, right? We don't need any more. <laughs> 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 I realize now what I should have done for a costume instead of going for the I was going to try and do Beetlejuice as you know I should have come as you that would have been a good uh, wow with that much costume. hair your pomp could have been like a Johnny Bravo masterpiece with three or four cans of eyes. yeah let me see let me see how high it would have gone yeah it would have been like wow oh, Jack you got I your Halloween costume now buddy that's my official Halloween costume yeah hey Don hey Rachel how's it going <laughs> <laughs> How have you been? I mean, the last time we spoke, I know, um, via live stream anyway, we spoke about uh, Blobfest, didn't mm -hmm. we? Mm -hmm. So uh, just a quick summary. How did you find our at-home Blobfest edition this year? Well, it's obviously it wasn't. It couldn't replace regular Blobfest, which hopefully we'll have in 2021. Uh, but Blobfest this year, the home edition, was really wonderful. I got to talk to a whole bunch of people from across the country who got to participate. Some folks who used to live in Phoenixville but don't anymore. Uh, they got to come back and sort of virtually visit the hometown, which is wonderful. Hmm. Um, and we hung out really, uh, had a great time at the, in, the, um, in the Discord chat, which is a cool app that we mm -hmm. use to manage the chat so everybody can hang out together during the event. Yeah, that was super cool, the community aspect of that. And the fact that because it was at home, it was um, a lot more accessible to people that are from out of state. Mm -hmm. I know we had, I can't remember the exact number, but we had people from the West Coast. We had a, lo a lot of other states than just PA uh, get involved and be part of it. So it was really cool to see that as well, that it's, it's kind of nearly going international. We'll see next year. Well, uh, <laughs> I know we had some folks from your home country who may have tuned in like, you know what i think we did yeah the blob made its way across the pond there you go god help them all <laughs> exactly exactly oh uh, rachel is gonna go and order us a curry it seems Ooh. oh no just her but i think she should put our order in as well that'd be kind of her and uh hey there ben who called us a colonial creeps um <laughs> oh wait so blobfest at home edition reached up to 32 different states wow which is pretty amazing is one of those really tired because we were up like watching movies all day <laughs> <laughs> the time difference was uh, they were asleep on the couch um so other than that um the colonial theater is open for business um we have some strict measures in place uh, mm -hmm. in place to make sure everybody is safe um, so have you been down to the theater since we reopened uh, back in the mm -hmm. middle of the year? 
Yep. Uh, so I, I was in for, um, I should preface this by telling everybody, um, I, I'm usually, I'm, I'm incredibly strict. We, my wife and I really haven't gone out of the house. Um, our trips involved basically just picking up takeout food or going to the grocery store and getting prescriptions, everything else. Um, we, that's why it's, why it's so important to have great lighting because we haven't really left the house and, <laughs> but we have been to the colonial because I've talked to the folks there and I know that they've taken all the precautions to keep me and my family safe. So, mm -hmm. uh, I, I've been there for um, um, Empire Strikes Back uh, on the big screen, which is only the second mm -hmm. time I've seen it on the big screen. Just a masterful film. Uh, I was there for Kill Bill Volume 1. I've been there a couple times. I just can't remember all the movies. It's been time really has no meaning in pandemic land. <laughs> That's perfect. And then obviously we are putting all those great precautions in place, but I know that we do have an alternative for people that want that extra sort of level of safety. Um, and I know that you and your wife were interested in it as well. It's our private screenings. Mm -hmm. um, so that's going to be in the Berry Theatre, which is our smallest and I think the coziest theatre. Mm -hmm. um, 68 person seat, seat uh, theatre with the best seats. They're the comfiest, right? Super comfy. We were just filming in those. So if you're joining us on the 10th for Nightmare on Bridge Street, or uh, as I uh, have taken to calling it, uh, A Nightmare on Bridge Street. If you're joining us, mm -hmm. Brittany, that's how you meant to say it, right? That's how I meant to. It comes out that way. It's, it's stuck right here. If you don't, yeah. uh, if you're joining us, we we uh, will be broadcasting to you from that theater, so you get to see the Berry Theater and its luxurious confines uh, on the tenth for our event. Mm -hmm. So why don't we get stuck into that? So a nightmare on Bridge Street. I'm very excited about this because it's how we're sort of adapting our Halloween event this year. Um, yeah, you look like it's stuck a little bit here. You, it sounds like you need to deliver the name of the event in the proper way. <laughs> Was it a Freudian slip? No, Is no, no. You said, you said the right thing, but you didn't oh. deliver it in the right way. <clears throat> so our uh, Halloween event this year is a nightmare on Bridge Street. <laughs> good. Is that good? That's a good start. Was cool. my uh, two years of musical theater studies worth it? I think so. Like you can yeah. hear how on rhythm you were. Yeah. I won't try to sing it because I want people to stay in tune with the uh, with the with the happy hour. So, okay. So the a nightmare on Bridge Street. Um, <laughs> could you tell us a little bit how we're doing the event for that this year, please? So anyone who tuned in for Blobfest for our live at home Blobfest will be very familiar with how this works. It's going to work practically the same way, except it's not as long of an event because it's not Blobfest. <laughs> So um, the, on the 10th, if you buy your ticket, you'll get an email. It will have, uh, we're showing four movies. Uh, it will have a link for each one of those screenings, those virtual screenings. Um, we'll have, we'll be broadcasting live to introduce the films, to talk about trivia, to do all kinds of fun stuff in there with you. So you'll get your email. You'll have one link for each movie and uh, we'll be talking you through it. Uh, Dash will be saying, you know, make sure that you open this link and start the next movie at 9 p.m. If you're worried about not being synchronized with everybody else, just jump into the Discord chat room where we're all hanging out and just ask for a time check. Um, I'm going to be there the whole time so I can uh, type it in and let you know when that is. When I'm not filming, I'll just be cutting in and out. Um, so, yeah, it's be really straightforward. Uh, we've got an event T-shirt by Chris Garofalo. <laughs> Uh, so make sure you grab that. I just saw it. It looks amazing. So make we sure um, are actually showing the exclusive first peek of it at the end of the happy hour. Oh. So stay amazing. tuned, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> nice head action. No, love it. <laughs> that was my head that made that noise. Uh -huh. nice. uh, so what, are, what films are we showing as part of our event? So uh, we are showing films by George A. Romero and Francis Ford Coppola, to name a few buzzword directors. Uh, in order, we'll be watching The Bat with Vincent Price. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll be watching Plan 9 from Outer Space by uh, Ed Wood Jr. We'll be watching uh, Dementia 13, which is the first film, first real film, um, by Francis Ford Coppola. And we'll be watching, uh, we'll close the night out with George A. Romero's uh, classic Night of the Living Dead, which just mm -hmm. had its birthday uh, a couple days ago, or yesterday. They're coming to get you, Barbara. Uh, that's a good one. I love that guy. I love Johnny. Is that the right one? Is that the right quote from that oh, right okay. film? You got it. It's, it's like I've been working at a theater, you know? It's like you work at a theater, right? Yeah, something like that. Look at me with those references. So that's a great lineup. And you said that there's some uh, bits in between that you'll be doing as Dash. Is that correct? 
we're really happy with the way the show is shaping up. We're going to have some interesting and unique um, interactions with the audience. We think mm -hmm. everyone's going to have a good time, especially if you loved Blobfest. We sort of did what worked well for Blobfest and ratcheted up a couple of knobs. Yes. I um I know that there was some some production value in effort in this one. I know it's not just here is the film, watch the film. I know that there's some interesting variety of interludes that will be taking place. So they're definitely ones to look out for. And I know that our reigning Miss Bloodfest is taking part in those as well. So I mean Maybe, maybe. We'll see. Maybe. Allegedly, that's what I've heard. <laughs> I mean from the the walls of the theatre just spoke awesome. to me. 20, uh, uh, Miss Blobfest Universe 2020, who is currently uh, at the theater watching Shaun of the Dead, as as most people who are not oh. in should be. <laughs> well, that's perfect. Well, mm -hmm. brilliant. Um, uh, all the details for our Halloween event, A Nightmare on Bridge Street, um, <coughs> uh, are available in the link within the comment section. Um, so do take a look at that after the happy hour as well. Mm -hmm. Um what else? What else are we talking about today? So, um, how can people purchase tickets? I don't know. I don't work at the. No, I'm kidding. It's a oh, I, was like, I know that one. Yeah. There it is. Shaun of the Dead uh, in the comments. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Colonial. Mm -hmm. So, uh, for our Halloween event, you can purchase tickets um, online um, on our website, thecolonialtheatre.com. And then, as uh, Chuck said, you're provided all the information, all the links uh, for that as well. So, do take a look out for that event. Um, do you want to make some drinks? Should oh my god, I would love a drink. Good. Um, would you like to go first, or shall I go while you get resituated? Why don't you go? I'm gonna walk everyone through my house to go where I've set the drinks up. <laughs> well, I'll let you do that backstage, and I'm gonna take up the full screen. Bands, How's bands. that sound? All right, I'll see you in just a minute. Cool. Uh, Chuck will be just back. Uh, he's just relocating to his kitchen because he is making a cocktail that is a cacophony, a potion of situations. Uh, my one is a little bit simpler this week, so that's why I'm going to go first. Um, I'm finishing it up right now, um, but I'm going to make a brand new one for everyone. Uh, no sharing, though, because... <clears throat> so this one I'm going to be making, it's called Sarah's Love Potion. It's inspired by um, Hocus Pocus, uh, Sarah Sanderson, because... You have one sip and you're in love because she makes everybody fall in love with her in that. Um, Hocus Pocus is one of the films that you can uh, view in our private screenings in the Berry Theatre. Um, as I said before, all details on our website for that as well. Um, for your quarantine bubble, uh, can go and see that. Um, I think I'm going to do it. So, Sarah's Love Potion. It's going to have a great colour to it as well. It's going to be vodka. Curacao, um, some lime juice just here, and also cranberry juice. It's basically, we're playing different colors right here. So I'm going to put um, my ice, I'll show you in just a second. There we go. So I've got my ice in a cup. We're not going to do any shaking this time. This is nice and easy, this one. This is a stir to make. So. We're gonna do an ounce and a half of vodka. This is me pouring. <laughs> you know what I'm like, I have spilled, I have um, dropped stuff uh, in prior happy hours, so I'm trying not to do <laughs> this time around. I'm making sure everything is nice and safe and settled. Okay. So, I have my vodka in there. I'm going to pour my lime juice in. Um, I squeezed about half a lime and added a little bit more as well because I kind of like the flavour. Um, there you go. Um, we're going to do an ounce of blue curacao, and this is important for not only the tropical-ish flavour of it, um, also very important in the colour. So, oh, wrong thing. <laughs> so an ounce of blue curacao as well. Oh, there we go. Happy Friday, right? I did pour a little bit extra in there. So as you can see, it looks a little bit like um, off-brand uh, mouthwash right now. So you're basically what you're going to do is just fill the rest up with your cranberry juice to create a lovely purple, deep purple color like this. You can either serve it, serve it it's a bit ooky spooky with the, um, the gradients of the colors there, 
or what I'm going to do to get those flavors and get that vodka around, I'm going to give it a nice stir. Very careful not to stir it. <laughs> oh, there we go. You can see it. Let's see. Oh, that's good. Yes. Dun, dun, dun. It's kind of a mixed drink, so it's a good one to sip. Cheers. Cheers. Think. Let's see if uh, Chuck is back ready. Oh, look, stay. thank you, Julia. It is very good. Um, are we ready? I sure am. I'm just getting my paper towels <laughs> ready because this one's a mess. <laughs> it's all good. I was not. I was very careful not being a mess. Uh, I've just seen if my teeth had gone purple. Um, <laughs> I was very careful this time. I didn't spill anything, so I'm proud of myself. Um, even though it may not have been the best use, best of you, so I apologize. Um, <laughs> you have. You said you have a lot of stuff, so I'm going to give you the full screen if that's cool oh, with you. Wow. I mean, Are you ready? I guess let's go for it. <laughs> Um, guess it. Walk everyone through your drink. Here we go. I'm ready to sip mine just now. <laughs> Hopefully you made Jack's drink, and now you're drinking it while you play along with the home game. This one's a mess, but I swear to you, it is absolutely delicious and worth it. Um, it's going to be the weirdest drink you've probably seen this week. It's called Stranger Than Fiction. Now, uh, the first thing we're doing is we're adding two ounces of brandy. Uh, this is my favorite brandy, E&J, Grand Blue. We're then going to add an entire ounce of simple syrup. I normally just keep it in this little squirt bottle. Uh, it's a one-to-one -one mixture of sugar and water that you boil uh, and then pour in while it's still hot so it seals into the container. Um, it's always good to have simple syrup. You can throw that stuff on lots of different things while you're cooking. Uh, so we add those into our shaker. We're also going to add in five drops, but I'm generous about these drops, of chocolate mole bitters. Mm. We're going to add two dashes of Tabasco sauce. And right now I've lost half of the viewers who are never going to try to drink this. And I'm, I really like to go for the gold here. So we're going to lose the rest of you here. Are you ready? Are you ready? Our final ingredient in the shaker before we add ice is an egg. And I'm not talking the whites. I'm talking this entire bad boy minus the shell. So uh, I'm going to crack this and drop it into the shaker. I put all of these things so far into a shaker without ice. We're going to do a dry shake first, and I'll explain why in just one second. Once I get egg all over my hands, perfect. What? What an egg crack. What an egg crack. So far, we haven't made a mess in the kitchen. Make sure that we put everything in. Simple syrup, brandy, bitters, egg, Tabasco. Ah, there was one more thing. If there was like one or two of you who are still there and like, yeah, I would still drink this. Don't forget that you need to add a drizzle of absinthe as well. Now I've put all those things into the shaker. We're going to do a dry shake without ice to blend the ingredients. Because we're using a uh, not just the egg white, but the yolk as well, we have to shake the heck out of this to make sure everything blends up. Um, Obviously, the Colonial Theater does not want you to get sick by consuming raw egg products. So uh, if you decide to have this beverage, please do so at your own detriment, will, danger, something. Uh, this is the difficult part because I'm going to hold this real tight. Dry shaking doesn't actually seal a shaker up. And so if I'm not really careful, egg will get everywhere. Okay, we're gonna let that sit for just one second so all the liquid can uh, move to the bottom of the shaker before I take the top off, getting egg everywhere. We're gonna then, what we've got is a, a glass to stir in. I filled a, a, stir, a mixing glass with ice. We're gonna double strain this into the mixing glass so that we can uh, chill our drink and make sure we catch any kind of, uh, okay, good, I did. <laughs> it's been a while since I've made this drink, but I did shake it enough. So I'm double straining it right now into the mixing glass. Just give me one second, then I'll show you what that looks like. All righty. So we're almost there. I swear it's going to be awesome. We're going to get our bar spoon, and we're going to just really chill that down. I'm just going to make sexy eyes at you while I stir, if that's OK with the audience. Oh, 
almost there. Dean Martin would have already drank two of these before I even finished making them. All right, now we are going to pour that into a coupe glass. The preferred glass for this is a coupe glass. Uh, it's a vintage champagne glass. You might recognize them from the Great Gatsby promotional artwork and that very famous meme of him holding the glass out. These were used for champagne. These were the default glass for martinis for a long time. Uh, and we're using it here because it is a great display. It looks really beautiful uh, with the drink. One second as I pour this. And then beside being delicious, I'll explain why you'll want to make one of these. Okay, our garnish for this is a vanilla bean. We want to make sure we twist it a little bit so we get the nice aromatics and drop that right on top. Usually the vanilla beans will break up apart unless they're real fresh, so don't worry about that. Just float them in the drink. This is what we've come up with. This is a stranger than fiction. It looks like a, it comes out right as a delicious looking um, sort of vanilla pudding color and the consistency is thick because obviously egg. The Big benefit here, and maybe some of you don't know, um, 100 years ago, 120 years ago, loads of drinks, especially ones with whiskey, were mixed with egg. You may find those kind of drinks around town, like at our friendly Bluebird Distillery, but those are just egg whites usually, and the egg whites absolutely separate from the drink super fast and make it so that you either drink the drink fast or it separates and is a mess. Because we didn't get rid of the yolk, this will not really separate at all. You can sit and sip this for 20, 30 minutes, It'll get warm, but it won't separate on you. Oh, and it's so delicious. Think uh, vanilla and chocolate. Um, the brandy has those hints that, that backs it up. Um, you don't taste the Tabasco, but it opens up your palate. And uh, of course, if absence in it, you're gonna taste the absence. <laughs> you can't do anything about that. I think I would be knocked out after one. <laughs> It uh, does look amazing, though. The, the secret here for you that um, that I found out, because I, I made this as a holiday drink one time, mm -hmm. um, is that because you're getting so much protein, it uh, is either slowing down the alcohol consumption or it's buffering your body against the detrimental effects of the alcohol. In any case, you don't. It, this is not a drink that's easy to get a hangover on. Okay. All right. I'm on board with that. Well, it's the stranger than fiction. You have your drink. I have mine. Cheers to the weekend. Woo! Cheers. Clink. <laughs> yeah. I only didn't try to clink the camera so that I didn't spill egg on it. <laughs> yeah, that would be a pain to get out. Is it like really thick in consistency as well because of the egg? It's thicker, but I wouldn't say that it's a really thick drink. It's um, it's not like a gin or martini type thing because that's just straight alcohol. But it does mm. have like a like a slightly viscous, like thicker consistency okay nowhere near pudding even though i mentioned pudding <laughs> i'll have to try it one day one day right, you know, so while we're talking i'm gonna take my cocktail downstairs back Ooh. to the fun vortex and we'll uh, walk through my house <laughs> house tour um, house tour. we are gonna get started with some trivia shortly uh the trivia is based on the films uh that you can see over our halloween season i guess also known as October. Um, so um, some of the films that we can be seeing over October, um, towards the end of the month, um, you can see Hocus Pocus. Um, and then also The Addams Family um, and Shaun of the Dead as well are starting today. So Addams Family, Shaun of the Dead are starting today. They're the spooky ooky ones. Uh, we are also showing Kajillionaire and uh, Possessor Uncut as well. Um, those last two were new films as well. So not many uh, movie theaters are showing new films. Um, so um, it would be amazing if you came out to, to see those two, especially because new film, wow. New films. A new I'm film in 2020 gonna, that's not I'm been yeah, postponed. Now, Jack, I'm gonna just chill in my vintage colonial theater seats. Now this is showing off here. now. So let me sh give you a, a view of these real quick before I sit down. Yeah. <laughs> Vintage colonial theater seats. Oh, with the, uh, is that the Matt McGinnis? Uh, Matt McGinnis uh, <laughs> on the pillow that we were selling uh, not too long ago. Mm -hmm. Delightful. Uh, if people do want to get some colonial theater merch, I'm going to do another plug now because that just reminded me. Uh, yeah. If people do want to get some merch, uh, we are doing uh, a collaboration uh, not only with uh, Chris with the t-shirt that I'm about to show you for our Halloween event. Um, but also, uh, we do are doing masks as well. Um, I'm sure the link will appear in the comments magically at some point. Um, so do look out for those as well if you want some masked up colonial theatre blob style. 
those are some new ones too. It's not just the theater. It's also, or the colonial, but it's also um, the other films by sure urban shorty a with the Jack Harris film. So dinosaurs, um, they've mm -hmm. got some other ones. I think Equinox is one of them. Um, and I can tell you that just from my experience, I bought a whole bunch of those colonial theater blob fest masks where they were, um, the proceeds were going to the theater. And whenever I wear it around, no matter where I am, somebody stops me to ask me about it. So if you like, if you're around Phoenixville and you want to be asked <laughs> constantly, uh, get one of those. Yes. All of those are online as well. So have a little looky for those. Um, I've only got five trivia questions. I'll read them out, see if people can know them. So all we're going to do, five questions uh, related to either Shaun of the Dead, Adam's Family, or Hocus Pocus. I'm going to say the question out loud, and all you need to do is type in the comments uh, what you think the answer is. Uh, the first correct answer gets to have a sip of their drink. Ooh. I feel that's a good prize, right? Cool. Okay. If we're ready for some trivia, fingers at the buttons. Let's go. This first one is about Hocus Pocus. So question number one, in Hocus Pocus. Oh, I've got the, let me show you. Actually, we can show people what's going on here. We're getting Technology. high tech. We're getting high tech. There we go. Oh. The Colonials Halloween films. Oh, you were know, right? This. this is great. Oh, yeah. Did I not do this the last time you were on? Yeah. Oh, I, know. I worked out how to use technology. Boom. So, question number one is in Hocus Pocus, what is the name of the boy trapped in a cat's body? That is a, when you say it like that, it sounds really weird. I know, but I was thinking of how do I word this question? And this is the most like basic asking of the, of, of the situation that this predicament that this boy is in. He's trying to save his sister from the witches, but the witches get her and they, they curse him. Oh, there it into is. The cat is uh, quick on the, on the fingers. Yes. Of... <laughs> That was my Will and Fred depression. Yeah. Yes. I don't know if it's one of your questions, so maybe I'm going to ruin this whole thing for you. But um, that's um, the the actor playing oh. Zachary Binks as a boy is one of the main characters from NCIS. But the voice for him is a different person. That's odd. Mm -hmm. That's some 1993 interestingness. Yes, so Zachary Binks, or Binks for short, well done. If you wow. said if you said Thackeray Binks and not just Binks, you get two sips. Oh my god! Yeah, so, I'm feeling generous. Very uh, easy. Drink responsibility. Really interestingly, um, Hocus Pocus the movie is the only item I have ever won using one of those claw machines. <laughs> I, I swear to God, like, like the DVD or something? Or oh, like... no, 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 oh, no. This is before. This is VHS this... tape. Whoa. In the case, in a plastic thing, things that you think that the claw would totally just drop because mm -hmm. they are so big. Nope, nope, totally. I got it. I, I mean, I couldn't believe it. And hey, I still have that VHS tape. <laughs> it might, if it's in pristine condition, it could be worth something. Who knows? <laughs> I think this one is pretty easy. This question. Um, so let's see if we get it straight away. Question number two: Who plays Morticia in the nineties? Oh, who plays Morticia Adams in the early nineties Adams Family movies? Who plays Morticia Adams in the early 90s Adams Family movies? And your bonus tip will be if you can also <laughs> name the person who played Morticia in the television show. The original? Mm hmm See, I don't know that. So that's, that, that's your one. That's okay, baby. You got me. <laughs> <laughs> well, Ben got it straight away. He was in there with the answer real quick. Oh, yeah. Eric is in there, too. Yes, it is Angelica Houston. She actually had to have her, so they, when the makeup job, they taped her eyes a certain way so that they would more resemble the actress who played the uh, Morticia on the television show. Who is called? Oh, we're waiting for someone else someone to get it. Is anybody going to get uh, This is okay, a good is one. Anyone oh, gonna... She's a total Betty. I actually like her Morticia more than Angelica Houston. <gasps> Although Angelica Houston's fantastic. Mm -hmm. That yeah. shot of where she's like in the light and she's like, it's, the, it's like on her eyes. It's great. Oh, so good. Um, they, so, so that's uh, Carolyn Jones is the original. There it is. Ben got it right as yeah. Well. Yeah, I didn't know that one. So you'd be learning me. Julia got it as well. Brilliant. 
Oh, okay. she, I love that. If you go back, they're on, I think they're on Amazon, um, the Adams Family TV show. Just seriously put it on and watch if you haven't, especially on a Saturday or Sunday morning. It's perfect, like, cereal watching with your booberry. Uh, <laughs> don't, you know, I don't, I don't shame anybody about their uh, crying and eating booberry in a world like this. Uh, but um, if you go and watch it, um, it's so great to watch Morticia because – She's a hundred percent the head of that family, and she's uh, occupies the role that would have that would have on any other television show in that time period been occupied by a man. Yeah, the head of that household. She is the most sensical, and she's always sort of um, they're always turning to her for mm -hmm. what to do. It's great. Yeah, she was very uh, the prototype of the matriarch in a way. Like she embodied it in such a different way as well. It's pretty cool. I also had to say in the question, I'm not sure if you noticed my phrasing was early 90s because I knew that there was a late 90s version with Tim Curry in that was meant to be a pilot for a TV show that got made into a film. I just learned that. And so I was like, what? You need to watch it just because Tim Curry is like a gift from God. Evidently. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's, it's not very good. <laughs> it didn't seem like it was. Yeah, but... And she's first build. Go oh, I didn't well. realize that. I'll have to uh, you know, keep, keep a lookout for that. Okay, this is another Who Plays, but just in a different film. So who played Sean in Sean of the Dead? His name's he not Sean, so that's the, that sucks. It's hard to get. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is not Sean. Who played Sean in Sean of the Dead? We've actually got a... One second. Well, everybody's thinking. You got some... Some merch or something. Got some stuff to share. I feel like your basement is full of like cool stuff. Oh yep, yeah, there he is. There's Sean. Or also known as by Eric. Simon Pegg. There he is. <laughs> there we go. Mm -hmm. And I noticed someone from across the pond got it correctly as well. Rightly so. Hopefully so, right? There's yes. butter. <laughs> yep. <laughs> it's um so john of the dead's got uh, if you haven't seen it and you get the chance to see it at the colonial um it's a especially if you like horror and comedy it's a romantic comedy with zombies um and it's full of stuff from the uk so like they're utilizing the on-air television personalities in a unique way like it's actually them and a lot of them filmed mm -hmm. unique, uh, segments for the movie so if you if you're a um, a, a UKophile, a Britishophile, or what would that be an Anglophile, an Anglo Anglophile, I thank think. you. Um, if you are one of those folks, you definitely want to check it out. You'll see all these news personalities from around that time on the in the movie. Hmm. You can also book your tickets now to go see it at the Colonial. We'll be there. <laughs> Link in the comments. <laughs> We're on Tuesday. So if you go on Tuesday, you can um, uh, air high five dash from a big distance with the blob masks. There you go. Okay, next one up. This is another Hocus Pocus one. Question number four. In Hocus Pocus, what kind of candle needs to be lit to resurrect the Sanderson sisters? The Sanderson sisters, of course, the witches who are evil, but comic genius. It's uh, It's got to be one of the really large jar ones from uh, Candle. Candle barn, right? It, yes, it's not Yankee Candle. That is not the correct answer. Um. <laughs> uh, it's from New England Candle, right? Because there's supposed oh, to be yeah. a Salem. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something like <laughs> So in Hocus Pocus, what kind of candle needs to be lit to resurrect? There it is. Eric is your first. Oh, yes. Man, Eric, you must love mm -hmm. Hocus Pocus. Mad props to you. Good mm -hmm. Yes, the correct answer is... Uh, I haven't double-checked, but... Um, I can confirm for our audience that if you see Hocus Pocus while it is at the Colonial Theater, there is an incredibly rare special treat that the theater has um, arranged for you that people elsewhere won't get to see. So, and I'm not going to tell you what it is because I have no idea if it's been announced yet, but it's amazing and you're going to want to see it at the theater. I don't think I know what it is yet either, so you've got me in suspense too. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Okay. <laughs> Moving on to our last question. Now, this is another one for the Shaun of the Dead fans, but this is one is a more tricky one. Question number five is, uh, what is the name of the pub 
in ah. Shaun of the Dead. Now, in the <laughs> film, if you've seen it, it, it does get referenced a lot because it's part of the plan. So what is the name of the pub in Shaun of the Dead? It could be worse. We could be asking you to name all 12 pubs in the world's end also by Edgar Wright. <laughs> oh, yeah. You know, I've never seen that one all the way through. So what is the name of the pub in Shaun of the Dead? I do notice that this one is taking a little bit longer for people to answer. <laughs> if you're Googling, well, you're not cheating me. You're that's cheating yourself. Uh, <laughs> there's a mystery house that's connected with this out west. Um, <laughs> which, by the way, the, the fiction movie that just came out um, without uh, this year was, I didn't think was that good, but I could be wrong. Mm -hmm. There it is. Um, Winchester is. Yes, there. that is the correct answer. Mm -hmm. My mother, who is in the comments, uh, said Baffins, which is the local pub from my hometown in the UK. <laughs> You'll have to take us to Baffins one time. That sounds one day. Awesome. Do one they have day. And mash there because I love bangers and mash. Uh, probably. <laughs> I don't even care how good or bad they are. I'm just one. Yes. Mm -hmm. And fish and <laughs> chips and what's the other stereotypical British thing? If I bring anyway. a bunch of ruffians in to pick on older people, will Colin uh, first show up and just kick the living crap out of them with an umbrella? I would hope so. That happens in all so. pubs, Yeah, Pierce it? Brosnan is there as well. Oh, somewhere. oh, thank God. I love Pierce Brosnan. And this is the the um, phrase that I've seen memed throughout the whole year since March 13th, is let's go to the Winchester and wait until this entire thing blows over. <laughs> 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 yes. Oh. Um, and my mum said to you, yes, plenty of bangers. I don't think she's talking about food. I think she's talking about crazy people. So, wow. um, and while I have this chance, I should probably say happy birthday, mum. <laughs> hey, happy birthday, mum. It's her birthday tomorrow. So, I mean, in UK time, it's in like two hours time. So happy. It probably like, what are you, is she turning 40? Cause you're like, eight, eight, eight. <laughs> yeah, she's turning 40 for not the first time. Mm-hmm. Well, for her she, she like your majestic hair, she's probably got a great head of it. Yes, exactly. You know, she has great hair, and my dad is a barber, so it makes sense. Huh. Yeah, it all works out. I'm learning so much about you, Jack. I know, right? I should write an autobiography or something. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we should give the people what they've been waiting for. And Ooh. you know what that is? The what exclusive I look at the Chris Graffalo Quill Face t-shirt for A Nightmare on Bridge Street. <laughs> I love that you're committed to that. So oh, we got lots of people saying um, happy birthday to my mum as well. So that's good. Okay, so uh, you Americans are very friendly. Thank you. She appreciates that from across the pond. So our exclusive first look at the uh, merch for our Nightmare on Bridge Street. I've got a cough. I got a frog in my throat. You, throw it you need to. I can do it for you. Uh huh. Um, I'm gonna need like some kind of lozenge. Mm. Um, here we go. So, da -da -da, da -da -da -da. yes, this is the image right here. I might need to get this tattooed onto me somewhere. <laughs> Just straight in your face. <laughs> I mean, his previous work has been tattooed on someone's head from uh, Event Horizon. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah, our previous um, virtual happy hour guest, Chris Graffalo, designed this for us. Um, he's done quite a few of our posters from our Horror Bowl. Um, as you might have seen in the other uh, happy hour we did, we did a little sort of exhibition of his uh, previous work for us and for a few other people as well. So this is what it looks like, just image. Or, as you can, you will be able to purchase it on Quiver Studios, a t-shirt! Oh, da -da -da. Nice. I think it looks really cool. It's That's super ooky, spooky. Top. Kooky. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it looks super cool. Uh, the link for it is in the comments as well, so do check that out as well. Okay. That's so awesome. Boom. Oh. Actually, just... it's really funny because we're in my basement, so that's the Blobfest poster there, right? Oh, yeah, I see it, yep. And then is if I can the... Add the correct direction, all of those are Chris Garofalo posters there. <laughs> One of them is super inappropriate, so I can't really show it to you. 
So you've been basically funding uh, him I mean, since March. Got, uh, <laughs> all of those are Chris Garofalo. That's the um, Horror Bowl poster above that little tiny uh-huh. television there. And then we got his Hellraiser. Hellraiser. The one on the end is not him, but the Duck Hunt one and the Hellraiser one are him. <laughs> you could say I really like Chris's work. Oh, and I see uh, Julie was saying in the comments uh, about how New Jersey's doing at Adams Fest. That's cute. Hmm. Oh, is it, I wonder if it's showing all of them. I want to see costumes of that. That would be cool. A few more tissues. Okay, so let's recap. What have we done? We've got our private screenings available uh, in the Berry Theatre, which you can see uh, from today all the way up until the 8th. We've got Adam's Family, Shaun of the Dead. Uh, you can see that in our regular screen screens as well, um, along with new films, Kajol in there, and Possessor Uncut. And you can also book Hocus Pocus as well, which is going to be showing from the 16th of October all the way until the 29th as well. That's so cool. take a look on our website for those details and please pre-book ahead. It helps us out a lot as well. And uh, making sure that you get safe and we are all in the right quantity of humans. Um, so, uh, additionally, um, I, from what I understand, talking to folks there, as soon as Hocus Pocus was announced, a whole bunch of um, private bookings happened right away for it. I so did. you yes. want to make sure that you're, you don't miss that opportunity, you should do it right now. <laughs> right now. Uh, <laughs> like in a different yes. tab. Don't close away from us. We're mm-hmm. awesome. Like exactly. Um, and also, of course, what we were here to talk about our Halloween event, which is. Oh, hang on. Let me just turn it. <laughs> the Nightmare on Bridge Street. Uh, yes, our multimedia event. It's amazing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> very dramatic. Um, uh, and full details. Of that are going to be on our website also and in the comments as well. So we'd love you to take part in it. Uh, sooner than you think. We, we recognize a lot of folks are doing online stuff, and the closer you get to Halloween, the more things there's going to be. So this is going to be your October the 10th. This is actually happening a week from tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Uh, so you want to make sure that you don't miss this. It's, it's You'll have plenty of time to do all the other Halloween things like after this, but definitely join us on the 10th next Saturday um, for uh, we've got Sorry, I'm an umming. It's the cocktail with all the egg in it. <laughs> uh, we've got The Bat with Vincent Price. We've got Plan 9 from Outer Space, which is not the worst movie ever made. And we'll tell you why during the event. We've got uh, uh, Francis Ford Coppola's Dementia 13. And then we've got uh, the, the classic original Night of the Living Dead. Barbara. <laughs> They're coming to get you, Barbara. Barbara. Rock it off, Johnny! (laughs) (laughs) Um, Yeah, and of course, the Colonial, uh, we have our membership program as well. So if you are a member, look out for those details. Also, um, I want to thank you for joining. If you're a a member, renting the Berry Theatre is less expensive. It is indeed. One of the many perks to being a member and sustaining a non-profit um, art house, uh, independent art house, uh, in the middle of a pandemic really helps us out. So, <laughs> uh, I want to thank you for joining me today on the penultimate happy hour. Um, oh gosh. I'm I am honored to join. <laughs> you. Uh, it's been a lot of fun. Uh, I'm sad I don't get to try the eggy cocktail you made in person, but one day we shall. Um, is there anything else you want to plug? Anything else you want to talk about? <laughs> you know, I just wanted to mention uh, for the folks who were hanging out with us. Thank you. Um, we love you. Uh, please let your friends know. Um, I keep finding people don't actually know the Colonial's open, which mm-hmm. really harms the theater um, and all the staff there and their mission. So um, if you know people that love Halloween movies, especially the ones we're showing, Hocus Pocus, everybody loves Hocus Pocus. Let your friends and family know. Like, say, are you are you actually going out to Bridge Street for dinner? Did you know mm-hmm. they're showing Hocus Pocus? Like, um, and then like for your friends like myself and my wife who aren't leaving our house, the rental option is a really great one. So definitely like let your friends know, share the posts about what the mm-hmm. screen are happening this week. It really helps the theater out. Um, and if you're able to please donate, um, you could just, just donate. Um, you say, Oh, I, I can, I can, I can spare 50 bucks this month to help the colonial letter or 10 bucks or whatever it is. Um, all of those things help so much. So that way, when we come out of the other side of this pandemic, <laughs> we can all go back to the Colonial and have a great time. Well, thank you. That means a lot. I appreciate that. Um, and Rachel is back just in time for the curry. Uh, I hope it's at my doorstep <laughs> from Maryland, right? I think that's where she got it from. You dropped it off. We've got some waiting. Good. 
she's my Uber Eats of the night. Um, <laughs> well, thank you for rejoining us. As we're just about to end, Rachel. I appreciate everyone coming to join us today. Um, all the details we spoke about are within the comments as well as on our website as well. So do check that out and make sure I know we're looking on Facebook right now, but make sure you follow us on Instagram as well. Also, where we've got some exciting content on that too. Um, thank you so much. Thank you. And there's another happy hour on the 23rd as well. So I'll see you then. <laughs> uh, thanks, Chuck. And goodbye, everyone. Cheers. <laughs>